Hey everyone, welcome back to my personal channel, Socials Awkward. My name is David Vidal. Uh, today I want to talk with you guys about um, some sweet spots on your Companion T-Rex, four items actually. So I'm going to do this video in one shot and then uh, break it up into four smaller videos to make it a little more palatable. That way you guys can be searching out the content that you want instead of sifting through one really long video. In this small series of videos, I'm going to talk to you guys about the rear view mirror, the ECO indicator, your stride line, and the ever elusive power band. These are the sweet spots of the Campania T-Rex. Let's go. All right, moving on down the list. Let's talk about the ECO indicator on your gauge. As you guys know from a previous video that I did, the uh, gauges on motorcycles, including the Campania T-Rex, uh, which might be another compelling argument for why the T-Rex is, is more like a bike than a car, um, is that the gauges are horribly inaccurate. I love the T-Rex. Um, I think the guys have done an amazing job. I hope one day I can tour their facility and shake some hands and meet some people. I've really no complaints about this thing. I've ridden so many other motorcycles and for whatever reason, those gauges are just hard to, to get right, to, to be totally, totally accurate. And I imagine there's a thousand mitigating factors that um, change why, why, they, why they say what they do. For example, the, the fuel gauge is um, horribly inaccurate. And that's why this ECO indicator is so important because we all want like the best fuel economy. Now, you know from that other video that I did that it just doesn't, it just doesn't really matter. I always get the same miles per gallon, no matter how I ride my T-Rex. I can ride it hard, I can ride it soft, whatever that ride that day presents, um, I get the same uh, amount of fuel economy out of that thing. So my my tank holds about um, seven and a half gallons. Uh, I, think the, I think the book says they hold just a little over seven, like maybe 7.3, but I don't think they're counting like the neck, which I always end up filling inadvertently. So um, when I look at the gas pump, I usually get about seven and a half gallons in there, and uh, I I can I I will drive 210 miles um, before I really need fuel. Now at, at 180 miles, I'm starting to itch. I'm I'm looking for a place to to get fuel. Um, at 200, I'm getting a little more excited or <laughs> nervous. Uh, at 210, you need fuel. Period. Full stop. End of story. At 214, you are doing the walk of shame uh, because you ran your T-Rex out of out of fuel. So um, I don't recommend that you run it really, really low. So right in between 180 and 200 is is usually uh, where uh, I I get my fuel. And again, this is a reference from another video where you use your trip meter as your gas gauge instead of that that fuel gauge on on the right. So. Um, I always use my trip meter as, as my fuel gauge and it never fails. I get 28 miles per gallon no matter how I'm driving this thing. I fill it with seven and a half gallons and I drive 210 miles. So you divide those numbers, I get 28 miles per gallon no matter how I'm driving this thing. So I, I know exactly where my range is and, and all, that's, all that's good. Safe to say they have this little icon that pops up, this little ECO icon. And uh, let me just read it to you out of, out of the book. It says, when riding the vehicle efficiently, the economical riding indicator appears on the multifunction meter to indicate favorable fuel consumption. Monitoring the economical riding indicator can help the rider maximize fuel efficiency. And who doesn't want to do that? Who doesn't want to like maximize their fuel efficiency? But what I really love is this warning. I don't know if, if you guys have read your manuals. I know it's not like the most exciting thing to read, but I can't wait to meet the guy that wrote this manual because there's some snarky stuff in here. And so there's, there's some funny little warnings. And stuff. So anyways, um, the warning here, it says, failing to properly observe the road ahead increases the chance of an accident resulting in severe injury or death. Do not concentrate on the economical riding indicator by taking your eyes off the road observe using peripheral vision okay so that's really good advice. um but uh that warning that's for me they put that warning in there for me because if there's an eco indicator i want to know everything about it i want to know how to how to ride economically i want to know that i'm because even though that my my miles per gallon doesn't necessarily change i feel like and i could be totally wrong 
But I feel like if I'm riding in the ECO, that that's a sweet spot, that that's where the engine wants to be. And that's where I'm, I'm not doing any harm to the motor and I'm, I'm driving it as I should be. I'm not ramping it up and I'm not, you know, it's right in that sweet spot, right where it's supposed to be. So I, I spend way too much time looking for that beautiful ECO icon to manifest in, in my multifunction display. Uh, and definitely spend way too much time looking down <laughs> to, to see what's happening in there. Uh, to like, hey, am I, am I in the sweet spot? That indicator will appear whenever I reach my cruising speed and my tachometer is between three and 6,000. So um, it doesn't seem to matter what gear I'm in, uh, but if I'm, I'm cruising in that specific gear, you know, so let's just say I'm rolling around my town. I hardly get out of third gear in my town. So, um, I can be, if I'm ramped up in third gear, I'm not going to get that indicator. And if, and if I'm too low, I won't either. That indicator usually manifests between 3000 and 6,000 RPMs, which I think is also interesting because the motor runs, it revs a lot higher than you think it should you know if you're comparing it to like a, a vehicle like a truck or a car it, it runs a lot at a much higher rpm but that indicator is still on which means the motor is happy it's happy doing what it needs to be doing and you've got plenty of stomp left on your gas pedal if you need to power out of a situation so you're not riding it really really low but i think it's important because that indicator will tell you where the where the motor is happy or or thereabout as much as you can trust it it's it's telling you what what the what the motor really likes. One thing I really do appreciate about the fuel gauge is that if you if you follow the fuel gauge as it directs you, you'll never do the walk of shame. You'll never run out of gas somewhere because the indicator tells you that you need fuel way 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 before you need it. And I actually uh, had a car. I had a really um, fancy car at one point that used to do this as well. And I remember talking with. Uh, one of the the techs about it, I was like, "Hey, what's the deal with the the fuel indicator?" And he said that this particular brand, this particular uh, company, car manufacturer, does that for a couple of reasons. One, they don't ever want their car to be seen on the side of the road, and so they want their drivers to fill up early. The second thing is, and I think that's probably more that than any other thing. But the second thing is that they they have they want the driver to never have to go through that to never be embarrassed and to never be out of fuel and so the vehicle will indicate that it needs fuel long before you actually need the fuel kind of put the fire in you to to go fuel up so i do appreciate that about the t-rex is they seem to have taken a page out of that book where they care about my dignity and they don't want me doing the walk of shame so uh, the fuel indicator tells me that I'm out of fuel at 160 uh, miles when I can actually go 40 more miles easy, 50 more miles before the light even starts blinking, you know, before I get the warning that I'm down to my last little bit of fuel. Also, it's probably important that I mention that not just in your T-Rex, but in any vehicle, you don't really want to run your vehicle to empty. You don't want to run your T-Rex to empty because there could be some sediment uh, in your fuel that's resting at, at the bottom of your fuel tank that can get sucked in. And, and so that's why it's, it's really important that, that you don't test this very often. It's very important that, you know, maybe do one or two tests while your T-Rex is new to find out where your empty tolerances are and then never approach that again uh, so that you're not, you know, inadvertently pulling junk into, into your system. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I would love to hear in the comment section uh, what you are getting on, on your T-Rex for mileage, um, miles per gallon, um, what what the indicator says versus what you're actually getting and how many miles you get out of a tank. When do you usually fill up your tank? I would, I would love to know that. I think that's good information for all of us. So if you've made it this far in the video, if you would comment something like that below, that would be really awesome and helpful to everybody in the community. I hope to see you guys on the road. As always, ride safely.